seen our storms too. Northeast, what a nice break. New York City, we've dried out nice. For Stormwatch at the Weather Channel, I'm Paul Emick. We'll begin with a look at what's happening across uh, the uh, tropics with our tropical update. Also talk about active storms across the contiguous 48, including as a result of Hurricane Earl, a severe thunderstorm warning for Gilchrist and also Columbia counties in northern Florida until 4.05. Uh, the ground of severe storms approaching the western sections of these counties, moving on through. And uh, that just as of a few moments ago, pretty stormy in this region. Hurricane Earl, that's its current position near Panama City, Florida. Pretty broad area of circulation, that is near Panama City. Winds around 80 miles per hour, sustained. May expect you could encounter some gusts higher than that, though. It is moving northeast around 10 miles an hour. And in some ways, the faster the movement, the better. Because now that it is ashore, it is weakening a bit, but it's also dumping lots and lots of rain as it makes its slow progress. Problem is, it's got a lot of uh, water still to go. It was able to tap a very rich source of moisture and bring some incredible rain totals along the Gulf Coast. You'll see in a few moments now, Mike Sidell will have images of some places that have 15, 16, 17 inches of water. It could dump a lot of additional rainfall, too, as it is on the move, this batch of moisture. Maybe just a bit south of Atlanta, Georgia, and on the move. That's what's uh, happening with it as we go into the day on Thursday. Of course, we'll discuss this in greater detail in moments. Let's first of all concentrate on the here and the now. What can we expect? We can expect some incredible storm surge or the waves actually kind of piling up in many areas, uh, maybe some places five to 10 feet above average. That is in and of itself is enough problem. Hurricane warning from the Alabama, Florida border all the way to Suwannee River area. Also, we have tropical storm warnings in effect. And you're going, okay, it's a hurricane. Here, why do we have tropical storm warnings? Well, these are in effect because tropical storm force winds may still exist beyond the hurricane uh, wind force area. Also, something we have a lot of times on kind of the northern eastern section of a hurricane and sometimes even a tropical storm as it begins to interact with land. At the time of the interaction, we often see a chance of some additional tornadoes. That's why we have the tornado watch in effect for northern Florida, portions of Georgia. Not as active in the, the peninsula of Florida, although about to Tampa here, about to get another round of storms coming in. There's a center of circulation, kind of a big area close to Panama City. That's where all the heaviest of rains are, too, around Valdosta, Georgia now. Big storm potential here. Again, we'll talk more about this coming up in moments. Hurricane Danielle on the way out, moving uh, now well out to sea northeast and uh, kind of beginning to weaken further, too, as it encounters much colder water. Looking at additional areas here, but nothing of really great promise presently in the uh, tropics. Looking at a number of waves still here. Also another wave there, not uh, too far off uh, from the coast of South America. That being monitored. As we look even further on to the east, this is the coast of Africa, western coast of Africa, around the Cape Verde area. Waves on the move, some convection, storminess on the south side of it. We'll monitor this particular wave, too, as it leaves. In the Pacific, we have another system, Hurricane Isis. Sustained winds around 75 miles per hour. Looks like it's about uh, 10 miles southwest of Los Mochis, Mexico. And it may have actually made some landfall in this area. Kind of tough to get some uh, uh, data from this area. But you can see where the hurricane warnings are in effect, as well as tropical storm warnings, where this may additionally uh, uh, cause more 
showers and storms and problems and three, even some heavy duty winds here. Primary risk in this, incredible rains, the uh, maybe three to five feet storm surge in many areas and we could be bringing some of this moisture on northward on beyond Baja and northward into California. Some moisture already here but what's left of this as it continues across land, maybe moving toward Arizona or New Mexico, but things may develop where it could move into Southern California. We'll discuss this next. Rough night's sleep, no big deal, look again. This x-ray shows no support for your neck and spine when you toss and turn on an ordinary pillow. But now there's the Contour Cloud, the world's most comfortable pillow. Patented soft touch memory layer molds to fit your head, neck, even your ear for unparalleled softness and comfort while Blue Bay straightens and aligns your spine. Plus, exclusive Crescent provides comforting support to your neck and shoulders. It even cradles your back. Watch again how ordinary pillows simply don't support you. Now see how the Contour Cloud cradles your head in softness as it straightens and aligns your spine. Thousands have paid $90 for this memory pillow, but you can order ours direct for only $19.95 with a 90-day money-back guarantee. <laughs> The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom. A service of the Cable Hurricane Earl has moved local. inland. Hurricane Earl, ha Earl has moved inland, but residents are still dealing with heavy rain and wind. Welcome to the special edition of Weather Center. I'm Cheryl Lemke. Now we'll have a complete look at the weather throughout the rest of the country coming up in just a moment. But first of all, we begin with the latest on Hurricane Earl. Let's join Bruce Edwards in the Forecast Center for all the details. Thank you, Cheryl, and good morning, everyone. And indeed, it's been a rough night over the southeast uh, uh, Gulf of Mexico as Earl has come inland with its attending wind and rain and storm surge. And we're going to be looking at some significant rain before all said and done. Take a look at the satellite picture, and uh, we get a little bit of a jump as we start to shift the satellite picture around. But let's go to show you the latest information on Earl from the National Hurricane Center as of 1 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Earl was centered at 30.2 degrees north, 85.5 west, or right near Panama. Panama City, Florida. Its maximum sustained wind still over hurricane strength at 80 miles per hour. It is moving northeast at 10 miles an hour. Central pressure 29.17 inches of mercury or 988 millibars. Uh, so once again, it is still a hurricane, but it should begin to weaken now that it works its way on over the land. As it came on shore, state officials in Florida say they really have no way as of yet to assess the damage from Hurricane Earl. So far, there are reports of power outages, trees down, and blocked roads from Panama City eastward to Apalachicola. Utility officials say it will take a, a while to get an accurate count of the total power lost in that hurricane area. I can introduce Stu Ostro, our senior meteorologist, has been following the storm all night long as it has come on shore, and uh, Earl has uh, created some havoc there, and as usual, uh, there's the threat of the flooding and uh, the storm surge as the system came on, because Apalachicola Bay is a little shallow, isn't it? Yeah, multifaceted effects from this hurricane. Even though the center is inland, we still have those strong winds pushing the water on shore in the bay and we have the threat of tornadoes and heavy rain as well. That's right. Matter of fact, we have the severe watch out. That's a tornado watch issued by the Storms Prediction Center is uh, in effect until 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. And that's uh, very typical with landfalling hurricanes. A look at some of the wind gusts now. And again, nothing exceeding tropical storm force, but still it's pr pretty blustery along the coastal region. So uh, uh, once again, a little wind-driven rain all through the region. Now, uh, Stu, tell us a little bit about, again, the storm surge, which is usually the dangerous part of the storm as it comes ashore. And uh, as we're saying, it, a pretty good punch, and uh, the bay's fairly shallow there across northeastern uh, parts of uh, the Gulf. It is, and with winds blowing counterclockwise around low pressure systems in the northern hemisphere, that's what it's doing. It's coming in out of the south. We've already had reports of uh, tides about five feet above normal with some coastal flooding in Levy County and also coastal flooding elsewhere around the Big Bend. That will continue during the overnight period and actually then uh, in some places we'll have a high tide as we go through later in the morning and midday and so people shouldn't let their guard down even at that point. Now we look at the rain, Doppler estimates of rainfall uh, through the region and again some substantial uh, rainfall right along the immediate coast and we're just beginning in the inland areas of course to see the uh, tropical rains and that will likely uh, continue to accumulate uh, heavily throughout the course of the morning. This is the uh, outline of Florida, then Georgia over here and Alabama to the west. We see the extremely heavy rains that were falling in around the Panama City area earlier, but as you mentioned, starting to push up into Georgia now, some of these oranges and yellows, at least as estimated, 
by radar in the uh, three, four, five inch range into Georgia. All right, let's look at the regional radar out of the southeast. I think it's still a, a very uh, classic uh, comma shape of the radar echoes. And uh, while we see the storms pushing over towards the east coast of uh, Florida, we also want to uh, point out that there's a special marine warning out for offshore from Altamaha to uh, Fernandina Beach and from Fernandina to St. Augustine till 545 this morning due to those heavy storms that are moving through as the storm continues to crank through and has pretty good tail whip still yet to come over western parts of Florida. It does. We uh, have been watching this squall line for the last several hours and it continues to push on to the east and northeast, not too terribly far away from Tampa St. Pete and here and folks who are getting up either there or in Jacksonville, anywhere else in the northern part of the peninsula should keep their eyes to the sky over the next few hours as this squall line comes through. Some of these individual cells at least a couple of them could potentially produce a tornado and even though most places won't get a tornado, most places will get the gusty winds and the heavy rain. Now to the north of where uh, Earl is moving, we can see the rainfall marching up through Macon, Georgia right now in the central Georgia and again it continues to bubble up like a bold, uh, bubbling cauldron now so residents in Augusta and Atlanta can expect rainfall in the next couple of hours to begin to press in from the south. Yeah, Atlanta is uh, teetering on the edge of the rain here. Still not sure exactly how much the Atlanta metro area will get. Probably not as much as places farther to the south and east. Anybody uh, getting an early start out of Atlanta heading to the south and east should expect a rough go of it. Flash flood watch is posted for a good chunk of south Georgia and Alabama as well as the northern portions of Florida as the rainfall could be locally heavy. Now we're talking a couple of inches, uh, but what might we expect as far as uh, some of the maximum amounts yet to come this morning? Well, we could see anywhere in the uh, the three to six inch range. A couple of places could get a little more than that. We hope that nobody gets quite the amounts that occurred around uh, Panama yeah. City. We also hope that this just skedaddles on out of there before it can drop the kinds of amounts that we saw with Tropical Storm Alberto a few years ago. Well, uh, another uh, system we have that we're concerned about is Hurricane Isis in the Pacific because that's creating its own uh, set of problems over the southwest. And as of the 11 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time update, Isis was centered at 25.8 degrees north, 109.1 west, or approximately 10 miles southwest of Los Mocos, uh, Mexico. Top sustained winds are minimal hurricane strength at 75 miles an hour. It is moving north at 10. Central pressure 990 millibars. And uh, ISIS, uh, again, continues to work its way up the Gulf of California. It lashed Mexico's Baja Peninsula Wednesday, killing at least one person and wiping out about 20 houses and leaving hundreds of tourists stranded at the Baja state government, or at the, stranded in that region. Baja state government uh, stated that uh, nearly 1,800 people were in temporary shelters, 20 homes destroyed in a community outside of uh, Jose del Cabo. So ice is creating problems. We've got the water vapor imagery. We can see both our systems here in the roller coaster of moisture we have. Not one, but two hurricanes landfalling during the evening hours. Here's our little ball of moisture, heavier showers and thunderstorms and winds with uh, ISIS moving up. We can see some of the high level moisture already pushing into Arizona and New Mexico. Uh, disturbance over the last couple of days has caused some locally heavy showers and thunderstorms already in Southern California, including the LA area a little earlier. And we do expect that as this moisture pushes up into the U.S., we'll see some more locally heavy showers and thunderstorms. Meanwhile, we see this flow across the continental U.S. coming in like this. That is what has helped to steer uh, Earl during the last couple of days, should continue to do so, and so we expect it to take a track plus or minus in that direction, and as a result, locally heavy rain, gusty winds, rough surf uh, from Florida right on up through the Carolinas. So we expect to Earl. Rain was actually uh, reasonably heavy a little bit earlier on in the evening. It's uh, making its way to the east here. These rain showers are going to be... Uh, We're continuing to bring... Good morning, everyone. It's 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific time. I'm Bruce Edwards in the Weather Channel Forecast Center as we continue to keep an eye on a couple of tropical systems, Earl and Isis, one southeast, one southwest. Hurricane Earl is still a hurricane as it has moved on shore across uh, northeastern Florida and continues to work its way on through the southeastern U.S. Satellite picture cranks up, goes into view, and again we can see the system as it works its way to the northeast. It's uh, centered, uh, once again, right about in this area, right in through here. 
and you can see again the moisture surge up and around the hurricane itself as it comes in so the entire southeast can be blanketed with some significant weather throughout the day today here's the latest information just in from the national hurricane center as of 4 a.m central 5 a.m eastern time uh, hurricane earl is still a hurricane it's centered at 30.5 north, 85.3 west, or approximately 40 miles north-northeast of Panama City, Florida. Its top sustained winds are minimal hurricane strength, and it should continue to weaken now that it is entirely over land. Uh, at 75 mile an hour are the greatest or strongest winds, and those are southeast of the center around Appalachie Bay. It continues to move northeast to 10 miles an hour, central pressure 988 millibars. Now, there are still hurricane warnings in effect from Panama City, Florida, to the mouth of the Suwannee River. Now, all the watches and warnings west of Panama City have been canceled because the winds west of the center of the uh, hurricane have weakened considerably. But to the east, that is the powerful punch that we're seeing. So hurricane warnings still remain in effect. And then south of the Suwannee River to Anclot Keys in Florida, we do have tropical storm warnings in effect. And as always with landfalling hurricane, there is that threat for severe weather. And we have a tornado launch in effect for northern Florida and southern Georgia until 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time this morning. Now, yesterday night, early this morning, take your pick about between 1 and 2 o'clock. That's when uh, Earl came ashore near Panama City, Florida. And state officials say they really have no way to assess the damage from Earl so far this morning. There are reports of power outages, down trees, and blocked roads from Panama City east to Apalachicola. Utility officials say it'll still take a while to get an accurate count of the total power lost in that hurricane area. And they'll really find out more as the sun comes up and they get to get out there later on this morning. Now, the winds are not that significant a feature, although, as we mentioned, southeast of the center, there are still some hurricane and a gust around Apalachee Bay. We take a look at the uh, situation, and there we can see, once again, that the top winds we're showing here right now are over land are around Dothan, Alabama at 40, but you could be getting some much stronger winds coming in here around the east and southeast side of the storm. And storm surge is still a threat. The flooding of 7 to 10 feet above normal tide levels accompanied by large battering waves are still possible southeast of the center, and that'll put it into Apalachee Bay. The storm surge flooding is expected to be particularly dangerous in the Big Bend area of Florida, and it could be life-threatening. So we're not over yet. Of course, you got the center of the hurricane. you got that counterclockwise flow, and this is where the strongest winds are coming in out of the eastern Gulf into Appalachie Bay and surging on in. So that is indeed a threat. Heavy rainfall estimates. You can see, once again, the lighter shades of pink by Doppler radar estimates of oh, 12 to 15 inches of rain right along the coast where Panama City is about here. You get to Apalachicola, once again, and right here, Tallahassee's right about here. Heaviest rain right here where the center made landfall, uh, right around the Panama City vicinity. But you can see the rainfall amounts here in southwestern Alabama are continuing to grow uh, around uh, Dothan and Ozark, Alabama, for example. You follow Alabama, you're seeing about uh, six to eight inches of rain by estimates so far, and that will continue to pelt down. So it comes as no surprise that flash flood watches are posted from southeastern Alabama through south central Georgia and across uh, all of the northern parts of Florida at the present time. Here's a look at the regional radar, and you can see again the classic shape with the center of Earl approximately in this location here. Here comes the surge of moisture off the Gulf of Mexico strafing the west coast of Florida. As a matter of fact, we uh, still have severe thunderstorm warnings for Gilchrist and Columbia counties in northern Florida in effect. Special marine warnings are out for uh, Altamaha to Fernandina Beach and Fernandina to St. Augustine. That's on the east coast of Florida down through here because of these storms. As we close on in, you can see the heavy weather marching through as those storms continue to strafe the region from Albany and Tifton, Georgia, down I-75 towards Valdosta and heading on down towards Tampa. You're talking about some very heavy downpours. And there you can see the leading edge of the rain shield. The most substantial rain likely will be surging up in this vicinity here from southeastern Georgia. Uh, on into uh, central Georgia, around Augusta area, that area, Statesboro, Georgia. Here's the radar out of Atlanta, and you can see the leading edge of the moisture. It is poking its way up slowly but surely to the north, so the south side of Atlanta likely to be catching some showers very shortly for the morning commute. But again, the heaviest rain likely over southeastern Georgia, north Florida, into South Carolina, several inches possible. All told, we could see an upwards of 5 to 10 inches of rainfall. That is one problem. Another is in the southwestern U.S., ISIS, 
It was Hurricane Isis. It is now a tropical storm. Here's the latest on Isis just in from the Hurricane Center. Isis downgraded to a tropical storm with maximum winds at 60 miles an hour. It is uh, moving to the north at about 12 miles an hour, expected to continue that speed. And uh, it continues to, once again, uh, bring some heavy rains into Mexico. So here we have Isis right here, and here is Earl right here. And if you watch the uh, moisture roller coaster there, you can see it once again moving. And this is going to be allowing Isis to move in this direction here and spread the rain up through uh, Mexico. Heavy rains here and into Arizona and eventually Southern California. And with Earl in this position here, and this little trough digging in, it's likely to nudge Earl in a more northeasterly track over the next couple of days. So Georgia. Florida and uh, a good chunk of the Carolina is likely to see some substantial rain and right now flooding is the biggest threat with Earl in the southeastern United States. So that's the situation. We've got Earl in the southeast, ISIS in the southwest. And we'll continue to keep you updated on both those storm systems. Once again, you can check us out as you go to work today on the internet anytime, day or night. Weather.com is our address. That'll get you in touch with the latest weather information. And now with the latest all across the country on a Thursday morning, we go back to the studio and Vivian Brown. Well, thanks, Bruce. And of course, we have been watching our two hurricanes here. But other than that, we've been talking about another little system, a weak system over the lower Great Lakes this morning. We've had some light showers move through the Chicago downtown area. So it's a soggy scenario this morning. Your commute into work will be a slow go this morning. Northern Illinois, a close inspection shows the heavier rain on the south side of the city as this generally pushes off toward the southeast at about 20 to 25 five miles an hour. We don't think this will be an all-day event, just basically a morning event. So getting an early start, if you have to be in early this morning, you will encounter this heavy rain uh, traveling Interstate 57 northward toward Chicago. Again, uh, wet conditions here this morning. It's all in and around the general vicinity of our surface cold front. This front was responsible for some severe weather yesterday over parts of the northeast. So far this morning, though, the bulk of the heavier rain and storms have already moved off the coast and behind it we have slightly cooler drier air with temperatures right now in the 50s and 60s from the Niagara frontier to western Pennsylvania but right along the immediate New England coast we have temperatures in the mid 60s at the time. time once again for a look at our tropical update which will feature a hurricane yet still a hurricane Earl which is now beginning to work its way northeastward in the southern parts of Georgia it's also going to feature a brand new tornado warning out right now for Citrus County in west central Florida as well more on that coming up in a moment the latest on hurricane Earl four o'clock advisory central daylight time the center of circulation over land 30.5 degrees north 85.3 degrees west or about 40 miles to the north northeast of Panama City, Florida, which means we should be looking at a weakening trend from this point forward now that center circulation is over land and not over water. Top sustained winds, just a minimal hurricane right now. We think that these gusts up to 75 miles per hour are near the core or the very center of circulation right by the eye wall, which again is very near the center of the storm. 
Again, it's moving northeast at 10 miles per hour, crawling along, and the pressure stands at 988 millibars. From this point forward, we're still looking at hurricane warnings out right now from the Suwannee River in Florida, northwestward up towards Panama City, even though it has made inland. It has moved inland right now, and it's going to be in the weakening process. Officially, we do have those hurricane warnings out. And southeast of there from the Suwannee River all the way down to Ancot Clee, uh, Florida, we still have tropical storm warnings in effect. And you can see we are looking at some nasty showers and storms. Take a look at this squall line right in through here, which is beginning to pass through the Tampa St. Pete area. And one of these, as a matter of fact, is producing a tornado right now. We'll show you that in a moment. After we show you this, a tornado watch, which is still in effect right now until 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. It covers much of north central and northeastern Florida and much of the southern tier of uh, Georgia, too, until later on this morning. 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Let's pick up the squall line once again. It's uh, many times during landfalling hurricanes or tropical storms, we do have, uh, we do see many reports of tornadoes. And again, we can see a, a vicious squall line moving on through right now. And this just into the Weather Channel. Well, tornado warnings have now been issued for Citrus County, including adjacent coastal waters in West Central Florida. That until 6.20 this morning, Eastern Daylight Time. At 5.45, a tornado was indicated by National Weather Service Doppler radar two miles southwest of Crystal River. The tornado was really moving northeast at 45 miles per hour, so now is the time to take cover. If you live in Georgia, the rainfall creeping on northward now. Looks like it's going to be a hairy rush hour for the south side of Atlanta, that is for sure. And between Macon and Atlanta, at least downtown, lots of rain. We think some of that rainfall will get on the north side of Atlanta as well, but be much, much lighter than what will be falling south and east of Atlanta as our storm tracks off towards the northeast. Let's see what's happening right now with Hurricane Danielle. Still on the picture right now. And again, it's moving off to the northeast rapidly into the North Atlantic, only bothering shipping interests at this time. Danielle will no, bother, will no longer bother the east coast of the United States. A couple of the more tropical waves. We'll check on those for you, too. One right here, one right there. Organization not expected anytime soon. And you can see as you look at the back edge of this wave, it begins to move eastward. It's not very all that organized, that is for sure. And coming off the coast of Africa, yet another healthy looking wave. Something else we're going to have to worry about in the United States is going to be Tropical Storm Isis. The 2 o'clock advisory Pacific Daylight Time still had it moving on northbound, throwing a lot of moisture back into New Mexico, Arizona, and California. And with the heating of the day, that could spawn some big time rains, maybe some severe weather once again for Southern California. As Hurricane Earl batters the Gulf Coast, stay with the Weather Channel. We'll have around the clock coverage with continued updates on Weather Center on the hour and half hour. On your marks. Get pet. Is this how it feels at the airport gate? United Airlines now has faster computers at our gates to get you on board.